Here is some advice on answering assessment item two. This assessment asks you to do a number of things. It asks you to use a consensus building approach. And one of the reasons we do that is because this is an approach that business uses to identify the values that the business or the organisation wants to adopt. So this is very much how ethics in business are worked out. They get people together, identify the values that these people think the business should have, get them to workshop that and find out which are the ones that, that fit best with the business. Another thing we're getting you to do is to do some group work or some teamwork. Now we do that because when you go into employment or if you're in employment, you'll be working in teams. Sometimes you'll know the people in the team and other times you won't know the people in the team. And, and these days when you're going for some jobs, sometimes the job interviews will be team interviews and you'll have to work at a problem within a team. So working out how you work in a team and how best it works for you is an important thing for you to be able to do. Finally, we're getting you to do some reflection on past experience. Because reflection enables you to learn from past experience. And employers want you to be able to learn from these experiences. If you're going for an interview, employers will often ask you, what was something that you, a problem that you dealt with? What did you learn from that experience? So we're, we're really focusing on building these important skills that you need in employment. All right, now let's look at question one. In question one, you've got to do some work by yourself and some work in groups. So the first thing in question one is to work by yourself. Prepare a list of five values or principles. They might be honesty, they might be the principles of commitment that you would use in making ethical decisions or taking ethical actions. You need to write a 100 word justification for each of these and post them in your group forum discussion board. And you need to do this by the end of March so that then the group can use these to come to a consensus. Step two is working in groups. In your group, and you can do this anywhere, you could do it on your group sub forum, you could do it in Facebook, you could do it via email, you could do it over the phone, however you want to work. You need to work out which five principles the group agrees upon. And we'll be looking at a consensus building approach during one of our online meetings or in one of our face-to-face um, -face classes. So we will be working on how to do it. I've also given you a link to a wiki how on the consensus building approach. When you've got to that final five principles that the group agrees upon, you need to put together a justification for each of these principles. And one of you must post the final five on the group forum discussion board. And now step, the last step in this is working alone. And here what you've got to do is to write a 200 to 300 word reflection on the consensus approach. It's not a reflection on each of the values, it's a reflection on how you did work out which of the final five you would do. And you need to submit this via EASTS, um, on the due date, the 24th, you will find help in writing reflections at the link below. And also on the next slide, I go through some starting sentences that will help you write a reflection. Right, now, writing a reflection, it's not something that's um, done in the third person, it's done in the first person. It's statements about what I thought about the process. So some of the statements might begin, I thought that reaching a consensus would be difficult because, or I was excited about using a consensus approach because. 
then you could go on to say, and I think this is really important because it's part of the criteria, we achieved consensus by. How did you achieve consensus? Did you say, well, everyone has to agree or super majority agrees, we vote on it. And if everyone, if the greatest number agrees, that's okay. So you need to make sure that you say how you achieve consensus. You could also say, one of, or one of the great things about consensus is, is ensuring that everyone in the group participates. So you could say, we helped everyone in the group to participate by doing whatever you did. We also want you to learn what you felt about the consensus approach at the end. I learned that using a consensus approach did this, or I felt that the team did that. I felt that the team really worked well. Um, we managed to discuss every all of the issues and we arrived at a good result. Um, or I think that we could have improved our use of the consensus approach by, and it might be some time management issues, or it might be yeah, such as starting earlier, um, or it might be the, the medium that you used to um, to connect with everyone in the group. So this, these are some reflections that I want to see in your reflection piece. And note that it's not a very long reflection. And if you look at the wiki, how um, they say 300 words is probably the smallest reflection that they'd be expecting. And, and that's what I'm expecting here, um, 300 words on this reflection. So um, write your reflection. Now, for question two, this is something where you work by yourself. You need to read the case study. You need to read the imaginary student response to the case study. Now that response should have been done using utilitarianism. Then you need to use the following headings to answer the question. And first of all, you've got to say whether utilitarianism was applied correctly. And you've got to explain where in that imaginary answer utilitarianism was applied correctly. When you've done that, you need to have a look at the items that were missed from the application of utilitarianism. So there may be items from the case study that weren't adequately addressed in the utilitarianism, or there may have been actual approaches that should have been taken using the utilitarianism method that haven't been dealt with. So you need to list and explain those. And then you need to look at the imaginary answer again and see whether they've used parts of other theories used in error in the response and list and explain those. So that's how you need to do your answer to question two. And this answer should be submitted via EASTS. Finally, make sure you read and follow the criteria set out in the subject outline to maximise your mark. I'm not going to repeat the criteria here. You need to actually look at them, work out what you need to do to get the mark you want. So please make sure you follow the criteria. Um, and just to make sure you get a pass, if it passes all you want, Aim for a credit because that will mean that you've definitely met the pass requirements. So that's assessment two. Good luck with it. I'm sure you'll do well.